guys. Uh, Tyler at North, uh, North 40 Fly Shop in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, I'm going to do a tie-in video for you. And what we're going to concentrate on today is the October Caddis. Um, kind of one of our upcoming major hatches that we have in the fall. And we're going to cover three different flies. Um, first, we're going to start with the adult. And this is what the adult looks like. And this is uh, basically an oversized Goddard Caddis. And the reason I like this particular pattern in this fly is it floats extremely well. You can skate it really well, which is important. Um, and it, it just works. Uh, so you can look closely here. It's got an orange underbelly, a little bit of basic brown hackle up front, some softer rubber legs for the antenna, which I like a lot. Um, seem to get a few more hookups with that. Doesn't <clears throat> twist your fly as much when you're casting it. Some of the guys will tie it with a stiff much. hackle points for, for the antenna. And uh, those seem to twist the fly if you're casting it pretty aggressively. But uh, anyways, this has been a really great fly for me when I'm guiding. And, uh, and yeah, and so the other two flies we're gonna concentrate on are the pupa, the October caddis pupa, and also the nymph. And this is the rock cased caddis, and uh, you guys will see these in a lot of our western streams in Idaho, Montana, Washington, and you'll notice them sitting on tops of the rocks. And in the fall, uh, and and the springtime as well, the uh, the trout will pick these off of the uh, tops of the rocks, and you can even catch fish from time to time. That you'll see they'll have a bunch of the uh, the uh, pebbles from these guys in their stomachs, though, and. Uh, uh, but a very deadly fly, um, so we're going to kind of give you a, a broad range of uh, three different flies here that are going to cover that particular bug. So the fly we're going to start with is the uh, the adult, this guy here, the, uh, the Goddard Caddis, and uh, I'll kind of show you how I do it. Let's get started. So first off, we're going to use a, a little bit heavier nymph hook here for this. We're spinning here, so I like these heavier wired hooks. This is the uh, Dairiki 710 and a size 10. A little bit longer shank hook. Um, we're gonna be stacking some deer hair on there so we wanna have a little extra room, but it is proportionate to the fly. So um, here we go. So we're gonna cover the shank here with, uh, with thread. And we're using a little bit heavier thread today, again, because we're spinning hair. Uh, that way we're not breaking our thread. And for the majority of the fly, we're using antelope. And antelope's great for spinning hair. It's soft, it spins well, it floats well. And it just so happens to be the, the right color for this fly. So the first clump of hair, guys, we're gonna tie in and we're not gonna let it spin. We're just gonna tie it in and let it compress down. And if some of you guys have spun hair before, you'll know what I'm talking about. If, if you haven't, spinning takes a little bit of practice, but uh, I'll tell you what, the antelope, really makes our, our job a lot easier for spinning here. All right, so next clump is going to be orange. And again, this is for the underbelly of the, the October caddis. He's really orange, a lot of orange underneath the, the fly there. And this guy we're going to rotate kind of down to the bottom portion because that's where the majority of the orange is on the fly. And then the next clump is going to be right on top. Don't want to let it spin. And then we're going to stack it back, get some wraps in front here that helps lock it in. And it's okay if a little bit of that orange comes up into the top there, it's not, not a big deal. The, more, the majority of the orange you'll see when the fly is finished will be on the bottom. Again, spin, get that orange kind of twisted down towards the bottom there. Basically we're going to do that same procedure about three or four times. It's almost like we're tying a mouse. Darn near. A little tiny mouse. 
All right, so then if you notice here, guys, we're going to leave all oh, about a third of that front shank open here. It's not going to have any hair on it, but we're just going to put a couple half hitches on this guy. And we're actually going to take the fly out of the vise here. So you can see the, all the orange that's underneath there. We're going to start by doing our first uh, few clips underneath here. It's just going to be a flat bottom here. like to cut it pretty darn close, get that hook exposed. Okay. And then we'll start on the top. The next cut I'm going to do at an angle. And if you can see, here's the finish fly. You can see it has a 45 degree taper from the, from the front of the fly to the, to the back. So that's what we're trying to achieve there. <laughs> Nice and trimmed up here. And then I'm going to come back to the back portion here. Just make a nice straight, get all that hair gathered up. Nice straight cut. Boom. Okay, and that's pretty good. So that gives you a good idea of what it looks like before we do the, the rest here. Orange. Nice and khaki on the top, 45 degree angle, looking good. So now at this point we're going to put it back in the vise. Give them a few more trims here. And then again we're going to reattach our thread. Okay. And then we're going to do the antenna. So the antenna are just basic um, black round rubber legs. And these are like a medium round rubber legs. You can use the small if you want to. Uh, the larger or the medium work fine too. So let's get him tied in. Nice thing too is they compress down really well. It doesn't make a, a large head on the fly. So that helps us there. And then for the hackle, uh, I'm going to use a whiting uh, about a size, you know, 10 or 12 would be fine. Don't have to be perfect. Strip a little bit of the hackle tip off and we'll tie him in there. Okay, move the bobbin back forward. And the first few there I'll catch inside the hair and just go to town here, guys. Kind of go back over itself, build up a nice hackle, and then tie that sucker off. Okay. All right, so after that point, you get the hackle tied off. Um, I usually give the antenna a little bit of a lift there. Get them kicked up a touch. And just go ahead and tie them off. Okay. And then we're going to snap the rubber legs, guys. And then this is what I like to do with my goddards. Even my smaller goddards, I'll do this. I'll actually put a little zappa gap on that underbelly. And this guy's big enough that I can just apply it like that, but with the smaller ones you can use a, a bodkin. And then give the, the head a touch. And that's it. Pretty basic, but uh, out of most of the, uh, the different uh, October caddis patterns, I mean some guys will tie just a oversized elk hair caddis, but uh, this particular one I like a lot. It's very, very durable. Um, skates really really well when I was guiding I used to have my clients really really move this guy a lot and it seemed to really stay afloat super well so uh, there's your adult October caddis and next we'll do the October caddis pupa and then after that we'll do the rock cased caddis or the October caddis nymph and we'll do that
Thanks. Thanks again.